Hey there, everybody in the FFPE Global Facebook group, and hello to everyone on YouTube as well. Welcome to this week's Ask an Old Mog video where you ask the questions and we do our best to talk about it in a visual format uh, and hopefully shed some light on some discussion in the game and some things that might help you get better as a player, uh, make some decisions about what you want to do and things like that. Um, so this week's questions, uh, as I was browsing, uh, I, I found two questions about, uh, about the same thing, and that's usually a sign that I need to talk about it. Um, or that at least would be useful to talk about it. And so here we are. Um, I've got two questions about the same thing, the same basic topic, and we are going to get into it. So here we go. Um, as I was browsing through, I found a couple questions, um, and here they are. Uh, Leon D.O. says, hey, where can I get some more uh, dark material? And on, in his post, he had a picture of dark matter. So we're talking about dark matter today. Um, and then John T also says something about dark matter as well. Any suggestions on what order I should craft the dark visions weapons in? Um, and because dark matter is a fairly limited resource, um, I think it's a, these are a pair of really good questions. And the good news is, you know, we just finished up with a world of visions event. And in that world of visions event, you know, dark matter is a reward that you get for it. So let's take a, take a look here. You get dark matter as a completion and a ranking reward in Dark Visions and World of Visions events. So like the most recent uh, Xenogears event. Um, we've also randomly gotten some in the past, but it is pretty rare. Um, so be, I, I said just a second ago, it's a good thing we just had a World of Visions event because um, most people who like are like kind of competitive or trying really hard, you know, they got rank one in the Xenogears event. And so they're going to get a big payout of Dark Matter here in just a second. Now, my, my guess is most people who are going to get that big payout don't really care because the dark matter weapons we're going to look at are, are not that they're not that important um, but they are very strong especially if you're just starting out and just starting to kind of get your hands on them and don't have any better weapons to use they're very good for what they do which is to apply flat stats that said um, there are definitely some that are better than others and we're going to talk a little bit about you know which ones I think are useful to do um, and if you have a difference of opinion I want to hear about it so definitely drop a comment and let me know um, because if you know my, my opinion is just mine and, and here's what it is um, so a, a little bit more information though about uh, dark matter and these weapons so um, you can craft them all um, and they all cost either 2100 for a 10 star weapon or 2800 for a 10 star plus 10 weapon um, there are only a handful of those that event uh, that exist so unless you can get the full weapon you know I would recommend holding off um, so unless you have 21 or 2800, just kind of just kind of wait and see what you need, um, because in general, like I said, these are just stat stick items. Unless you get them to the top level, they're not going to be that good compared to other things you can get in the game like STMRs, um, especially if those STMRs provide passive effects or like boosts and things like that. Killers, especially um, these weapons, because they just give flat stats, they're not that good uh, by comparison. They are good at what they do. Um, they also all come with an AOE attack ability that is like, you know, okay. Um, some are better than others, but they're all about have the same modifier, but like, you know, some are magic based and some are physical based. Um, they will double cast if you have two weapons equipped, that kind of thing. Uh, but you can't like mix them into your characters, like double or triple cast routine. It's just like, you know, you just use it and that's all you get. Um, so there it is. Um, you get it from completing dark visions and world of visions events. So, um, with the exception, uh, this is just talking a little bit about them, them in specific. So, with the exception of the Dark Gandiva, which is a bow, they are all one-handed weapons. And that means they're going to suffer from all the problems that come with one-handed weapons. Um, the, main wep the main ones of those be lower weapon variants compared to two-handed weapons. Um, they also, um, you know, when you're, when you're single-wielding two weapons... Uh, dual wielding two weapons, you can only get a total of 200% true dual wield as opposed to 400% true double hand um, so that the stat difference is, is bigger. Um, and uh, uh, lower variance we already talked about. That, that matters less for mages, and so I'm going to talk about that for a second. Um, but, you know, that's going to change in the future too. Um, and yeah, all the issues that come along with, with one-handed weapons. Except for the Dark Gandiva, but the problem with the Dark Gandiva, because it's a bow, there aren't there's only one bow in peril weapon or user that I can think of right now, and that's uh, Locke. Um, so it's kind of a rare in peril, so it's not the best weapon. So 
Here's my suggestions when it comes to these weapons. Generally speaking, I want you to focus on the types of weapons that you use commonly. Um, sword and rod are generally speaking going to be the most applicable to be used on every type of unit. Um, mages can use, almost every mage in the game can use a rod. There are a handful that can't. And uh, the dark gambantine, which is the rod, is very high stats. It's very good at what it does. Um, the sword, the dark Ragnarok, is, um, it, it is it's very high stats. But it doesn't have anything to it other than its stats. But if you need to use them, they are there. Um, my second suggestion is to create weapons that are used by units you, you like to use or synergize with units that you use. So if you're running like a water-based fist and peril team with like Carton, Tifa, and Cacteria, having the Dark Kaiser Knuckle is not a bad choice. It's not a bad pickup, especially if you're going to be using dual wield on any one of those units. Um, that's not going to be their best build, but it is an option if you want to do it. Um, and so like... You know, Dark Kaiser Knuckles is going to be good there. It is a very high attack fist. Um, and then finally, my other suggestion is, at current, only weapons that boost attack and magic are available. So even though there's a staff and there's an instrument, they boost magic and not spirit like you might think they would do. Um, and so um, that's kind of an issue. But the nice thing about that is if you're building a true... Uh, a true double uh, a true dual wield mage and you want to pick up the instrument to go along with the rod and then you've got two really strong you know uh, one-handed weapons that do magic stat that's a thing uh, especially if you're running some like a rod in peril and an instrument in peril on the same team for some reason not the worst thing in the world to have um, really high magic stat a rod and, and an instrument or a rod and staff if you've got a staff in peril so they are options um, if you're not familiar with where to get these I'll go ahead and show them to you. You go to the Vortex, go to the Exchange, and here we are. This little dude right here, the Moogle Guard Captain, he tells you he's got all these weapons that you can exchange for, as well as Super Trust Moogles. Um, there's lots of different weapons here. Here's the Dark Gandiva, for example. Um, go ahead and click on it. It's a bow. We see that it starts out at Attack 24. I've not crafted this one. And it goes all the way up to this one, um, Attack 205. You know, it has the ability Dark Hunter, which is like um, its attack thing that we that it does. And yeah, it costs a bunch of Dark Matter. It costs a bunch of, uh, or you have to have a, a previous copy of the weapon to get it. Uh, and there it is. So it, it, it does all, it, this one does happen to go all the way up to 10 star plus 10. So it, it's that's fully maxed out. Um, and it's the only two-handed weapon of the group. The rest are all one-handed. Um, so there it is. I would recommend if I was gonna if I was gonna do any, I would do the sword, uh, which is the um, it is not the dark claymore. Uh, the dark claymore is not a good choice in my opinion, despite the fact that it's got very high stats. Uh, hold on, let's go back to this. Here we go. I would recommend the dark Ragnarok and the dark Gambantine for sure, and then depending on uh, what units you like to run, potentially the dark um, the dark Kaiser Knuckle. I did the Dark Harfe, which is the the instrument, because I have Bulwark and I like to use um, mages that can use um, rod or instruments like Angela. Um, but in the future, mages are going to get the two-handed weapon variance thing, just like physical units have, and then they're going to start start wanting to use two-handed weapons as well, which means these weapons are kind of going to fall out of favor. Um, and that's just what it is. But if you're just starting out and you don't have like good STMRs or anything yet, these are good weapons to pick up. Um, the problem is, by the time you start getting the units and the gear that you need to score well in Dark Visions um, to get these weapons, uh, they kind of stop being useful because you've got STMRs. There's my opinion on that. Um, if you've got a different opinion, I definitely want to hear about it. You know, what weapons do you think might be better? Um, and there it is. Now, um, we are, of course, uh, coming into the part of our video where we get a, a visit from our special guest, special friend Sharky. Sharky, come on out. Sharky's got some tips for us today. Hi, everybody. Do the Final Fantasy IV daily mission to get Lapis and EX coins every day. You can use these to buy Awakening Shards for NVA units. And while some are not good, Titus is. And he's available, as are Beatrix and Daisy, two very usable tank units. Don't miss this opportunity to pick up the strongest free NBA in the game for very little effort. And pearls. Thank you very much, Sharky. So let's let's take a look at what Sharky's talking about. 
Uh, if you go into the Vortex, you've probably already done this. It's not very difficult. You do this level, the Sorrowful Farewell. You do this every day. I've already done it, so I can't do it again. But you get EX coins and Lapis every day. So the Lapis, obviously, you're going to be using that to draw more units. That's very good. And the EX coins you can use for a variety of things in the special shop. So we're going to shoot. We're going to go there. Go to the special shop. Here it is. And swipe over to EX coins. Now, I happen to have a whole bunch of them right here. But if you look, Daisy Fragments, 10 for 150 is, you know, it's, it's, it's reasonable. This one right here, though, Star Player Titus, is the strongest free NBA in the game right now. Um, very useful for budget runs. Very useful for just clearing content. Um, a lot of high score runs in Dark Visions have used Titus. If you don't have other units, it, it, he's he's not. Yeah, he's definitely definitely worth the pickup. If you if you don't have Titus at EX3, go ahead and get him now uh, while you can. These are available until May 3rd of this year, so you've got about two months to go ahead and pick him up. Um, definitely worth it. If you don't have a strong magic take, Beatrix is a very good option um, as a budget unit. She's very, very good at just soaking non-elemental damage. Um, you do kind of need her event sword from when the her event ran where they gave her out for free. Um, but even if you didn't do that, you know, she's still usable. Uh, but, um, you know, this is going to help you get her to EX plus three if you don't have her. Um, I would also recommend Daisy if you don't have a good physical tank yet. Um, but Bohemi is in the um, Obnixus Shards store. Where is that? So if you're really wanting a tank, you know, Bohemi is kind of, is, is definitely better than Daisy in every way. Um, but, you know, if you don't want to spend the Obnixus Shards here and you want to get, still want an NBA tank, you know, Daisy's very good at what she does. Um, her shift form can get very, very high defense, and that's awesome. Um, I would not recommend Cleome. I would not recommend Jekt. Uh, I would not recommend Dark Knight Lunith, other than the fact that he does have some nice killer abilities that he can give the party. Uh, Monk, Sabin of Colts, definitely not. King Edgar, possibly. If you have not done the Final Fantasy VI Chronicle battle for the Mystery Crystal yet against Valagramanda, uh, King Edgar of Fidgro can be used to beat that in three turns. You know, you, you use him in conjunction with Terra and everybody else, but... Um, yeah, King Edgar is a decent one to grab there if you have not done that one specific fight yet. After that, you know, you don't need him anymore, so don't take him any higher than EX plus one. Um, unless you just really like Edgar. There he is. If you really like Sabin too, you know, whatever. The, they're all there. But uh, those are the ones I would start with is Star Player Titus, Beatrix, and Daisy if you don't have them. Um, don't, also, don't miss out. I mean, this is this is very easy. A Transcension Pearl for, uh, for just seven days of doing the edge event you probably already have the coins available get it get a free transcension pearl uh you might as well grab this one too you know whatever you can use those for a, a number of things now um relics are decent if you need relics to make uh mad um uh to make the esper upgrade crystals you know you can get those too it's a lot of things you can do with ex coins so don't miss out on a free opportunity to get ex coins on a daily basis from that event thank you sharky um, and with that, we are pretty much done. So if you've got any questions about, um, you know, dark matter or dark matter weapons and, you know, what to kind of prioritize on, if you've got a different opinion than I do, I definitely want to hear about it. Um, and thank you for sticking with me on this video that maybe might not be useful to everybody, but if you're starting out and just starting to kind of collect your first dark matter, um, you know, if you, if you're, if you're, if you're doing your first dark visions, you have to be level 50 to do that. So if you haven't, or rank 50 to do that, you haven't gotten there yet. Or if you, um, if you just got there and you're just starting your first one last time, or you're about to start your next one here in the next couple of weeks, you know, definitely do as hard as you, work as hard as you can to get as much dark matter as you can to craft those weapons, uh, at least at least one or two of them. Um, they're not all worth it, but um, some are decent at what they do. And yeah, I'm done rambling. Uh, but we'll see you next week in, in that video. If you've got a question you want to see discussed, drop a comment below, whether we're in the Facebook group or here on YouTube. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. Uh, you want to know what the easiest way to see these videos right when they pop out is? Subscribe. I put them out every Friday, but you know, they usually get posted on YouTube before they hit in the Facebook group. And if you're really that interested, subscribe so you can see them first. All right, take care. Peace. Oh no, where's my button? Where's my button? <laughs>